Well, we're very excited at the upcoming American Urologic Association meeting next week to be presenting the second of our studies using stem cells or the women's own muscle cells uh, to treat stress incontinence. And this is a report on 29 women uh, looking at safety and feasibility and also success at managing uh, stress incontinence using a simple local anesthetic procedure as an outpatient with um, no time off work or reduced activity. Results are, you know, granted this is an, an early experience and we're still optimizing technique, but very promising. We've seen in these 29 women with a year's follow-up, uh, no serious adverse effects and about two-thirds overall have reported significant improvement in their incontinence based on standardized quality of life measurements and diaries looking at incontinence as well as pad weight tests. This study has been possible as a result of a lot of our collaborators. So here at Sunnybrook, Dr. Sander Hirshhorn from Urology, a large group in University of Calgary, Urogynecology, and also our colleagues south of the border in the United States, especially uh, Michael Chancellor. So urinary incontinence is defined as the involuntary loss of urine that's socially unacceptable. And there's different types. Uh, stress incontinence is the most common type. And that basically is a loss of urine associated with anything that increases the pressure on the bladder. So classically examples would be coughing, running, jumping, sneezing, physical activity. And there's certain risk factors that we recognize, uh, certainly much more common in women, but also the more children you've had, uh, obesity, chronic constipation, chronic cough, again, which push on the bladder more. Patients suffer tremendously in many aspects of quality of life with incontinence. Um, it can affect relationships. A lot of women will have incontinence during intimacy uh, work because they can be having to go to the bathroom constantly and change pads. Often there's been one very embarrassing episode with a larger leak that they haven't been able to hide or contain within pads that's prompted the, the first visit to seek medical help. Um, and, and a lot suffer in silence because it's still one of the last um, taboo subjects that aren't discussed openly. Well, classically, stress incontinence has been managed with um, either injections of bulking agents such as collagen, which um, doesn't have tremendous results and it's not durable, just like it's used in cosmetics. It does mold and flatten with time, losing durability, or surgeries. And while we do have simple outpatient surgeries, they often employ uh, implanting a, a permanent mesh with some inherent problems such as infection or erosion or chronic pain. Uh, most of those surgeries also require some time off work and reduced activity for a month to six weeks while the, the sling surgery is healing. So this technique that we're looking at, the research involves a first visit, a simple local anesthetic um, one centimeter incision over the thigh muscle where we can take a couple of needle biopsies. This muscle tissue is then shipped uh, to the lab where the appropriate muscle cells are identified, purified, and then grown up. And they can be freeze-dried and shipped back to us where we reconstitute the woman's own muscle cells in some saline. And again, under a simple local anesthetic procedure guided with a little telescope, we can make four little 1cc injections right into the sphincter muscle to help hopefully restore the function of the damaged sphincter muscle. Well, even though this study data is very early and certainly we need to optimize the tech, uh, technique and see larger numbers successful, I think what's so appealing is that if we can get women back active, functional and happy uh, by treating their incontinence using their own tissue restoring function as opposed to having to make up with deficiencies with using foreign materials such as mesh with the problems related to that. Um, and especially if the procedure doesn't require any significant significant periods of time off work or out of functional state, then, then that would be a real boon or asset to the field for managing incontinence. It definitely would encourage women to come out of the closet, so to speak, and go to their practitioners and, and ask for information and help because there are a lot of things that, that can be done. And um, some of what the study using the muscle cells have uh, addressed or followed up on pre and post intervention is that impact on the quality of life, getting people back active and social again.